Welcome everyone. Great having you here. And we are going to kick this webinar off about NAB 2022, how to organize trade shows the right way. This is the playbook we are going to share with all of you. And I'm super, super happy to welcome you around the world. Thanks for registering. Thanks for listening in. And I'm super happy to talk to you today about everything about trade shows. It's a great time the trade shows are coming back and we are super happy to see that. What do you want to get out of trade shows? And you see here on the top left, the expectations, what most marketing teams, most sales teams, most leadership teams have when you are going to trade shows. Who knows about these expectations? Say I. Hi. <laughs> also here, Gerard. Hello. Hello. It's so much pressure on especially marketing and sales leaders to make trade shows a success. Why? Because the teams and the companies are also spending a ton of money at trade shows. But the reality, when you look at the bottom, looks sometimes completely different. Unfortunately, this was really a picture we took at one of the IBCs we have been from Amsterdam. And this is by far not the only picture we could have taken with empty booths. And today we want to help you fill your booth. We want to help you attract the right people and going really in there. And that's really what we want to share with you today. Why are we here? I want to share three main reasons today with you. Why are we here? And number one is an article from Forbes. They published an article not long ago where they said, what's happening with trade shows? The pandemic, there is COVID-19 in 2020, the whole economy, the whole trade show services more or less shut down. But Forbes published an article and mentioned the importance of trade shows and trade shows are coming back and we see it already luckily with NAB happening in Las Vegas at the end of April which we are all really really looking forward to it and especially for B2B trade shows are essential most of you are selling B2B complex software enterprise software video software software in a complex field and the more complex the sales is, the more vital and the more important are in-person meetings. Statistics shown and have proven that in-person meetings are more valuable to bring the know-how through, to gather the right information and also to build up trust. Another big, big reason, and this is reason number three, when you look here on the right, this 23% of the total marketing budget. 23% of total marketing budget was spent on trade shows before COVID. For sure, in 2020 and 2021, the budget was reallocated to online resources, online events, and so on. But we see already that the budget towards trade shows gets ramped up again. And I talked with a lot of companies already, and actually they see trade shows even more important. As we are getting into such a virtual world, they use trade shows to bring their team together, organize even more events, and use trade shows in a really, really nice way. Welcome, everyone. My name is Gerald. I'm one of the co-founders of Kickscale, and I'm super, super happy to present you today all about how you can organize trade shows, specifically how to make NAB a success. And together with my co-founder, Marcus, we are going to share this today with you. Welcome, Marcus, as well. Thank you, Gerard. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining here. So um, what are we going to talk today? By the way, I'm Marcus. I'm the marketing part of this. We believe that it's very important here in trade shows to work together, that marketing and sales collaborates, and that we make this together a success. So what will we be doing? So we usually, for every trade show that we do, and especially for the bigger ones like NAB and IBC in the video industry, for example, we don't go to those shows before we haven't had 
a clear goal, but also pre-scheduled meetings. So enough meetings that we that we know, okay, if we go to the show, we have enough meetings to bring back the ROI for this. And we always use for every trade show basically this four-phase process. There are a couple more phases in this process, but we focus now on these four, as we also want to focus uh, mainly on NEB. And those phases are the demand generation part. So this is super important. This is how we get pre-show meetings, right? We want to work really closely marketing and sales together. We want to then, once we get the meeting, schedule them the right way. We want to track every single meeting that's possible. Once we are at the show, then we want to make sure that the people, if you have a booth or if you just meet the people, you meet them at the right place, that you give them the right experience. And then what has, ha has to happen post-show? The work is then not over, then the real work starts. And then we end with the conclusion. Thank you, Markus. Really, really happy. And I will see that also from a more sales related topic and see it, how can we increase the return on investment in terms of sales as much as possible. And as Markus already mentioned, aligning marketing as well as sales is especially for trade shows super, super important. Let me give you a first an introduction about the four phases, how to organize trade shows. We put this process together. I will also show it to you, or we will show it to you, how we used it for our own trade shows like Web Summit last year in Lisbon, which you can apply to any show to follow these four steps. Number one is the whole demand generation phase. Most companies underestimate this phase. I totally believe this is the most important phase. Sending out emails, aligning marketing and sales, starting with the whole marketing of the trade show so that you generate a lot of buzz so that everyone knows you are attending this trade show and everyone wants to love or wants to meet with you. Number two, once you have scheduled meetings yeah, and once you have built up some demand already, the meeting scheduling starts. What do I mean by that? Make sure you book meetings up front. That means, as mentioned by Marcus already, important if you want to increase the ROI, make sure you have meetings already pre-booked. If you are traveling to a show and you don't have any meetings pre-booked, probably it's not the right show for you, or probably you, you just don't have a feeling what's going on at this show if you're not reaching out to potential attendees, other exhibitors, and so on before the show to make sure you scheduled it. Once you made a lot of buzz, you scheduled already meetings for the trade show, you can also give yourself a shoulder clap already because a great work is already done. We are going to phase three, and phase three is the meeting experience phase. This is now where the sales team really, really comes in when you are standing at your booth dressed up and want to make the show a success. Get most out of these meetings and even more important, track the meeting. Track down what's happening, ideally before that meeting happening, when the meeting is happening, and obviously also what's happened, what happened after the meeting. Number four, the post-show follow-up. Make it fast and make the right follow-up, meaning make sure everyone gets as fast the information what they want to have to follow up on the sales process, to accelerate the sales process, and ideally to close some deals really, really fast and to accelerate your pipeline generation. If you consider these four phases here, the chances are really high that you get a positive ROI out of the trade show and that you really, really get the most out of it. This is the end result. And I want to tell you here a little bit what, what I mean by the end result. When you look at it, you see here, for example, a list of meetings which are happening at Web Summit. And this is from us in back in November last year, where we scheduled 106 meetings before the show, but also then obviously people were visiting us at the booth. And you see here exactly what has happened in the meetings. Where were with the green ones, these are clear opportunities. The yellow ones where we say it was a good meeting, but no concrete opportunity. And the red ones, we met probably with the wrong people, not the right fit, not the right company and so on. And you see also here 
who was active on the team, who scheduled these meetings and also what opportunities have then been generated out. This is super important. Why? With the metrics, you set the stage what you want to accomplish. And we will talk about that later, especially Marcus will also say how important it is to set the right, the right goals. You see here, before every show, there are some goals like here, a total of 40 meetings. It was the goal and we achieved 106. This is what we want to share. This is what we want to have. We want to overachieve here and see also what kind of pipeline was generated out and also what pipeline got influenced as we have been visiting this show. So this is just a run through what you should have after NAV, for example. You should have exactly that. How many meetings? How many pipeline? What was here? Also the total costs of it to see was it worth going and having an overview about the whole meetings count as well as the meetings in general. And important for next year, for 2023 NAV already, get yourself the learnings. What are the learnings out of it? So you can improve for every show, not only for NAV 2023, but also for IBC, for example, to see what are the learnings from NAV. Because most likely you forget it, so you have to write it somewhere down that you have that you have that in. But Markus, let's jump into one of the most important phases, phase one demand generation. Yes, let's get a bit practical here. Um, if I don't go, I won't go too deep into those topics, but if you have questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to me and I can also share some playbooks with you. But as Gerard said, set clear goals. If you don't have one, and if you have never been at the show, still set one. If it's just, if you have no, like, no clue where to start, say 40 meetings, for example, for NAB, anything that you can think of, but having a goal is super important. But then what should you be doing now? Everyone who is going to NAB, for example, you prepare the data. That's the dirty work, but it has to be done. And you should usually start with the one, with the easiest way, the data that you have for it. So that could be, for example, the old meetings from NAB. That's why it's so important to store those meetings, right, from last year or from other events in that region or in this industry. Then you are for sure you have in your marketing automation tool or in your CRM, you have leads, contacts, um, existing opportunities that you're already working on or customers. Important, I don't have to tell you that. There are mostly sellers and marketers here. Deal cycles are long in B2B and we want to make sure to engage with them again as often as possible, meeting them on the show. And even if they are not going to NAB, that's not a problem because NAB is a great touching point, right? Because you're a great reason to reach out to someone, to touch base again, and to say, hey, if you don't go to NAB, no problem, let's jump on the virtual meeting, for example. But that's the existing data. So please go to every seller. That's why important you should sit down with your team and really think, who do we have? Who should we invite to that? Then you get new data. That's a bit trickier but it's also always possible for every show. And again, collect data. You need to know who, who you want to reach out to, but if you go to NAB, then you know already that this is, your target audience will be there. What could be new data, for example? There could be every show, every trade show, gives usually access to exhibitors, speakers, and sometimes also to all the attendees. You can also find, get go on LinkedIn, go on Twitter, there's an NAB group that you can either contact we can talk later about how to contact them but you can easily get those and attendees give you one hint for example um nab if you are a sponsor for nab if you so if you get a sponsorship a specific one you can also get to an, an attendee outreach tool where you can go in and search for example like for accounts like disney and they give you out all attendees and you can use this to reach out to them and invite them it's again another super important source. If you haven't started with this yet, then start now to collect the data. Collect the data, put it in an Excel spreadsheet, that's enough, and then sit down with your team and decide who is going to reach out to who. Also a tip, how do you get data? Most important is, first of all, you find it like an NAB portal or so, but you should automate as much as possible. So what we sometimes do, we go on Upwork. Upwork is, is a platform where you can find a lot of freelancers and they can help you, for example, to copy all the names and the people that you know they are a potential target for you um, into an Excel spreadsheet. And you can make sure to have a touching point. 
Never forget, make sure this is a potential target, right? I want to be GDPR compliant. I want to make sure this is really um, the person that could do potentially business with you, right? You could also do LinkedIn search. So there's a great, there are a couple of great tools out there. Um, for example, Gerard can show that later. We use a tool called Lemlist that allows me if you have the, the email and the LinkedIn link from that person, then you can send automated and you, you build the messages and you can send automated messages via, he get, for example, one email step and two or three days later, he gets a connection on LinkedIn and the email on, uh, message on LinkedIn. Easy is that because you don't have to be so customized with this approach because the, the only touching point you need in there is, uh, I see you're going to NAB, right? That's the only one that differentiates it. And yeah, then draft also the template. We have then on the next slide, we can then show this maybe later, there are also a potential, um, potential yes. um, template. But I move it here before we talk about the marketing stuff, Yaron, talk a bit about sales and show me what, what you have on this side. Yes, thanks a lot, Marcus. And as mentioned already by Marcus, contacting people up front is important. And we built the sales sequence for every trade show we are going. And I will show you also the sequence we have built for Web Summit in 2021 to automate our outreach as best as possible. And obviously, to meet as many people as possible. So I will directly quickly jump here into our tool and we'll share that with you here to see how are we doing that. So give me just a second and I'm opening that up. And what I'm going to show with you right now is a sequence which we used on a practical way where we used it for Web Summit and Looking into that, and just one more second, then I'm opening that up. And this sequence helped us to book these 60 plus meetings at Web Summit. And how does this sequence actually look like? As Marcus already mentioned, we use a bunch of tools. Yeah, we use our own platform, Kickscale, for organizing all the trade shows, making sure that work gets done. And then we use another tool called Lemlist where we get campaigns in. And for example, showing you one of our sequences here, and I'm making that a little bit bigger, where we contacted marketing leaders who are attending Web Summit. In this case, it was only 48 people who fit our ideal customer profile. And we sent them here actually an eight step sequence, which is quite heavy, I must say, as mentioned in the very beginning, this was also our learning, not making that so much. Yeah. But we got here 17 replies back, so 35% of these 48 people replied, and out of them, we obviously booked some meetings, which was great. And how does such a sequence look like? When you look into the sequence, you see it's really like a short message saying, hey, we checked out in your Web Summit app and saw that your company are attending Web Summit in Lisbon, and we would love to talk how, and here comes then the value proposition, for example, of your specific product service in, how you manage your team and manage and build up actually your marketing processes. And this is exactly what we have done here in that area and how we have fulfilled that. And this helps you really to make sure you are focusing on focusing on these kind of things and focusing on getting as many meetings in as possible. One slide here as well, this is how we built up all these templates. You usually have the customization part to make it not look like a super mass email. We have an introduction like here, both your company and Kickscale are attending Web Summit, would be more than happy to talk. Value and curiosity, yeah, what's really the value, why they should meet with us and then the clear call to action when they are available and including also some scheduling links here, for example, to make it easier for them to schedule an appointment with you. We have also an email playbook. You can download that directly on our website. It's uh, for free and there are also best practices in, especially when it comes to trade shows, but also other outreach tactics. Exactly, one more thing I wrote to this. If yes. 
also, Yara talked mainly about the sales side, right? Um, important for all the marketers out there, marketing should help. It should play a big supporting role in this. And what can you do on the marketing side? We talked about the existing data you have. Send them a newsletter. Um, give everyone draft social posts that the whole sales team or everyone in the company can use. They should post it on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all the platforms that we have there, right? Email signatures for everyone. Every seller or every CEO in the company is in contact with lots of people. Put an email signature in there and never forget it. Everything that you have here as an asset should link back to a landing page where people can book a meeting with you. Right? Just a form on a landing page is enough where they can request a meeting. You reach then out to them and say, um, yeah, let's meet and then you book it in. And oh, that's yeah. This is so important because obviously it's a team effort from marketing and sales getting, getting that in. Marcus, I'm handing it over to you to show us a little bit what's then next when we get replies back, when people say, hey, yeah, sure, let's meet and let's schedule some meeting because this is also not always the easiest thing, especially when there are hundreds of meetings to manage that. Exactly. Uh, again, it's super important. People underestimated how important it is to to schedule their meetings the right way and how to track them. We just talked now a lot about data. If you do NAB well this year, if you have lots of meetings pre-scheduled and you go there and you have meetings that you didn't expect to have, and you also get this, the, the business cards of the people, right? You should always track every single meeting for them. First, you will need this for the follow-up afterwards, but you will also need it for IBC maybe, which takes place in September, the next big conference and video, or next year for NAB. And this is how you build slowly your community and slowly um, your database also that you engage with, right? Not only around the trade show, but also around new product launches that you might have. But so super important, track every meeting that everyone has at the show pre, during, and post show. That's super important. If you don't have this, if you go home from the show and you don't know how many meetings everyone had, then it will be tricky to calculate the ROI. It will be tricky because maybe you, you spent if you have a booth like a couple, like 10, 20, 30, or upwards thousands of euros or dollar. And you don't know, did it work or did it not? Should we attend next year? So that's super important. Another thing where we see with clients what, what they struggle with is if you have a booth, everyone needs to, you need demo stations where you showcase your product. Never forget this. You need something, you need internet, you need the demonstration and so on. And you need to put the date, uh, the, the meeting place also into the, into the meeting. If you don't have this, I know it sounds simple, um, but some people forget it because of the rush. And if you forget it, then you're at the show and the you don't know where to meet. And at the show, I can promise you, it's hard to get a hold on people because they're all under stress, they're all overwhelmed with the show. Please also consider different time zones, super important. Um, we see this a lot happening that people um, schedule in, for example, we are in Austria and CST in European time, although the show happens in Pacific time in, in uh, the United States. And also important, put the right people into your meeting, right? If you have a complex product that you wanna sell and there's just a salesperson, also put, consider, do we need salespeople? That's why it's, again, important to have all meetings before you go to the show, go through them with the whole company, like with the CEO, with the marketing people and decide who should be in those meetings. What are priority one meetings? What are priority two meetings? And that will be super important for you then you're best prepared at the show um, when it comes. Yes, exactly. Phase two, super important. A lot of obviously organizational work, but really, really important to make the show work for you and to line up all the meetings the right way. What's happening when we are at the show? Yeah, and when we have scheduled the meetings in, we are going now into phase three. So you remember phase one, really this demand generation phase where we reach out to people try to get engaged with them, marketing as well as sales. Phase two, then the meeting scheduling, we have now already pre-booked meetings in and we are traveling to a show with ideally hundreds of meetings already pre-scheduled so that we know how many salespeople we should send towards the show. And now phase number three is really the meeting experience. And this is particularly important, right? Because you spend a lot of money for every trade show flying over the team, organizing the booth, organizing everything around the show, and for sure not to mention the whole planning before the show and all the resources which are involved. So before the show, 
my number one hint is always, and this should be always for any kind of meeting or show, train your sales team. But especially when you have like hundreds of meetings in a couple of days, make a sales training refreshment. What do I mean by that? Look at the right mindset. What do we want to get out of this trade show? Every meeting counts. You have to be in your peak state for these meetings. Show up in your pe best peak state and make the meeting happen and make the customers and prospects obviously happy with your product and your service. Define also and once more learn your discovery process. There are some things which we are showing and we have also some resources which we are more than happy to share how this discovery process could look like because nothing is more boring for you when someone steps up and one of your best sales team members talks one hour with someone where you know this is not the right fit. Yeah, So there are certain things you have to consider in this process to make sure you focus on the right people, you provide value and you get also something back to make sure is this the right person to talk to, is this an opportunity and how can you really move forward here. And obviously what always counts is define the goal. Yeah, Every meeting should have a goal. Ideally, everyone participating in the meeting from your company knows this goal. This can be as much as getting a follow-up meeting with a broader group, getting into the C-level suite of this company. This can be as much as convincing this person that this person loves our product. This can be even saying we want to sell here our product within this group because we have every decision maker here. But make yourself a goal. This should be part of your general sales process anyway. But the trade shows, it's even more important that you remember that and train that before because ideally every of your sales team members or you, you by yourself have every half an hour a meeting scheduled and go from one meeting to the next to make everything out of this show. And this brings me to the sales meeting process. And what is super important is on the one hand side, the meeting preparation that you really know with whom are you meeting? What is this company about? What might be their goals? What are our goals as already mentioned? And really digging deep in, do we have some data already about them available? What might they be interested in? So to get as much information out as possible, the better you are prepared for this sales meeting, the more likely it is that this one will convert into an opportunity or even into revenue. Especially on larger booths, but also on small booths, make sure you have a professional check-in. Ideally, someone knows already when someone is coming because you have in your system the meeting notes open and the preparation notes as well as linked to the LinkedIn profile. So you know actually where this person is. This will not be always possible, yeah? But if you can make that possible for some people, I guarantee you this will be a game changer. If your check-in counter says, hey, welcome Michael, or something like that, if you are sure and you know that and know this person or could figure it out before, super game changer, and you will start the meeting immediately in a positive thought. And important, take meeting notes. You can do that via audio or you can write it or someone else can write it, but make sure to gather meeting notes rather in a notebook and then you transfer it over into an electric system or you do it via voice, but make sure to have these meeting notes. And we are also more than happy to show it how we do that and what would we, what would we suggest doing it. Just ping us and obviously also here, feel free to ask any kind of questions in the chat. If we answer them during the slide deck here and during the presentation, we will. Otherwise, we will talk at the end also about the question. And gather the next steps. Imagine you have done the whole meeting. You did so much effort organizing a meeting, scheduling the meeting. Then the person is showing up. You take meeting notes. And then this person says, yeah, but please, can you enable a trial for me? Or can you send me a proposal? Or that and that. And then you don't do it. So make sure to have somewhere the next steps also listed. Super important because we come now to this super, super important step. Once the first day of the show is over, you should go obviously to the follow-ups as well. One thing to mention, and I'm just sharing that here, and you can look at this. This is our guidelines, Yeah, how we see it 
pre-meeting, during the meeting and post-meeting. We could fill an own webinar with that, to be honest. We will not go into details there, but what I want to mention is make sure you have some things before the meeting that you make sure the meeting is properly prepared during the meeting that you write that, that you ask the right questions that you are taking the meeting notes defining the next steps and afterwards here that you really properly follow up on the meeting because then the real work starts actually this brings us to phase number four which is post-show. And post-show is probably the most important part. Imagine you, your whole team was at the trade show, you had hundreds of meetings, and now you have to follow up. Because now really in most B2B organizations, you generate a lot of demand, you generate a lot of interest at the show, but then afterwards, the areas where business is happening because then you have follow-up calls you have probably follow-up meetings with some leadership team involved with other people involved you know already what's going on so this follow-up process is critical make sure in your list whatever you use you see who has been followed up with whom what's the concrete next steps next steps for every meeting this is crucial without the next step the meeting actually doesn't count because when there is no next step, there can be no sale at the end. And then it was not what we want to achieve, except exactly if you want to have some customer meetings and engage with them. Obviously, there could be, but ideally, every time after a meeting, there is a concrete next step which you can initiate and which you can make work. You will get a lot of data, obviously. During the show, you will get the meetings, you will get new leads, you will get meeting notes, next step notes, and so on. Make sure you sync them somehow into your CRM if you would like, or keep them somewhere in a system like what we also have with us with the Kickscale platform. You have everything in there that you know these have been my 50 meetings, my 100 meetings at NAB, for example, that when I go one month, after NAB back here and see what's happening with these kinds of meetings, where are we in that stage? And again, you can sync it to your CRM or you use it on a separate, separate way. And then what we have mentioned is the ROI calculation. When you remember at the very first slide or one of the very first slides we showed you, where you see these are the 50, 100, 200 meetings we have scheduled and what was coming out of these meetings. This report is essential for you as a business. Not many organizations know what's really coming out of a trade show. And still, the trade show costs a lot of money and you should make sure that every dollar or euro spent at the trade show is worth while invested. Last but not least, debrief the team. Make sure you share what worked good, what didn't work so well, what can you improve in which area you can go here and write it also down somewhere that you can find it next year because I guarantee you it happened especially also to me as well that's where this problem came from write it down somewhere that you find it next year and say ah last year we thought about this that's why we have to make this year better this is the whole post show phase and phase number four which is critical for your success I recommend doing the follow-ups if possible, ideally on the same day. So if some of your sales team members has 10 meetings a day or even more, they should even take the time in the evening or in the morning next day to follow up. It will supercharge your sale because no one is expecting a fast follow-up. You have it in and also you have it out of your mind. And once you are coming home, you can do already your first follow-up round. So you will be faster than anyone else. One thing to mention here, yeah, especially when you are going to multiple trade shows a year, when you are going yearly on the same trade shows, repetition is the matter of skill. What do we mean by that? Invite all the NAB leads to other shows as well. For example, IBC. You have already a nice database. The chances are high that people visiting NAB 
potentially also go to IBC and the other way around. And if not, you have a nice touching point. So with every show, you build up your database and have actually more people to reach out. Build a community. This is exactly what, what I mentioned here as well. Invite them to next year, once more, and use the data you have already. And follow the same process for all the events. I think this is super important. Build your standard operating procedures. Get your playbooks in place so that organizing, meeting scheduling, taking the meeting notes, following up, that you have here a standardized process which you can follow to make sure the return on investment is on the right way. This is really how this um, looks like and especially this repetition part is super important because you will see that with every trade show you are getting better in that and every trade show will actually make more fun because you will get you will get more meetings. Maybe Gerard I can also say something to this. <clears throat> it's very cool to see always when we work with organizations they have it builds also a connection between marketing and sales. It's this repetition because everyone, marketing is working hard and sales is working hard, right? But when you see you have the right meetings and when you see you grow out of NAB and all the contacts that you make, the good relationships, they benefit you for other shows as well in the video industry. So Next TV, is it um, any, anything else, right? IBC that you go in or next year's NAB. You build your community, you build a bit of your name, um, marketing is known, sales is known, um, you know you can trust each other, it's team building, and yeah, so so repeat this, we can just uh, recommend it. Jaro did also always great things. You can't remember everything, but the more you you uh, try to store on data for, around this, for example, also, what was the moment or the memory you had with a person? It's a great touching point. Oh, do you, when you contact them the next time, do you remember last time when we were NAB, when we had a drink or whatever, right? Could be anything, anything that connects people. Totally, yes. We got also a, a question from the audience which I'd like to answer. And the question was, based on our experience, there is always too little time to make meeting notes after the meetup. Next appointment is waiting. How do you handle this the right way? Yes, I'm totally hearing you. That's so true. And that's a good sign if you have one meeting and then there is the next meeting and so on. What I tend to do, there are two ways which I usually handle that. On an analog way, I really have my notebook in there. And while I'm speaking with the person, I take notes. I ask obviously before and say, hey, is it okay for you that I take some notes because it's an important conversation we're having and I'd like to remember the most important things. I write these down and with most companies we talk to, they have then, for example, someone on the booth checking in, I take 30 seconds, go to this person, say, please get that in into the official system, and they get the notes in. This worked for me really, really well. The other option is with audio. Yeah? But with audio, you need some practice to really make sure you have 30 seconds, you this was the meeting, these are the next steps, and so on and so forth. This takes a little bit practice, but this would be here my uh, comments on, on that question. Thanks a lot for, for the question here. Now, maybe I can also say here something for the ones that have that are not going alone to the show, but they have someone else with them or a marketer or so. But we also sometimes do it. We, we have one clear person, one person assigned that is responsible for putting the notes back in. So if you do this, for example, with if you have Slack, for example, or so, and you do voice recording. Make sure you always say the same, you have a structure, otherwise the voice message, as Gerard mentioned, gets messy. But if you say what was, for example, discussed in a meeting, who are the key people, um, what is the outcome, the next steps, and you always structure it like this, and you send it quickly to that person, and you ask the person, put it in, and then make on the evening just a 15-minute slot or so, and go quickly through everything because it's still fresh in your mind, and it will pay off. It's always... It, uh, taking notes is always work, um, but it pays off at the end. And the more information you have for the next trade show, yeah, the, the better you will be for that one. Because Garrett, I think we started also with other companies. We started, we had first just a couple of meetings, and we ended um, three, four, five years later with five, six hundred preset meetings at the show. And we didn't do this from one day to another or from one show to another. We built it up, and yeah, that should be. The way to do 100 
Yeah, cannot agree more. This is it takes time and it takes work, but it hundred percent pays off. And there is nothing worse than not getting a follow up after a show when you have been visiting some booth. There is another question which I'd like to quickly answer, and then we jump to the to the conclusion. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's great tips and very informative webinar. Yeah, thanks for that. We take it at always. Um, what's your licensing model for your platform? I'm more than happy if you stay afterwards and we can talk about that. And how long does it take to transfer data from HubSpot to Kickscale? One thing to mention here, yeah, with Kickscale, we organize all of that. So all of what you have seen today, this whole process, this is in Kickscale. And we actually sync with CRM softwares like Salesforce, like HubSpot, this data over. So also here, feel free to stay and we can show you a little bit more how, how this looks like as we'd like to get most of these questions answered and feel always free to ping us anytime here. More than happy to show you more and how this could integrate into your current ecosystem. One more quick question is, can you talk a little bit more about how you get contact details for email lists and if the NAB connection tool is effective? Yes, so as Marcus already mentioned before, there are certain services like Upwork.com where you can get email addresses out and we have also a playbook around that. So feel free also to, to ping us here and I'm ha happy to share here more details. And yes, the NAB tool is definitely effective, I would say. And Marcus, happy to get your thoughts as well because you obviously have all the attendees in there and you can connect with the relevant attendees and this is what trade shows are all about to build up this connection and the more touching points you have the more likely it will be that you also can meet this person exactly yeah um the, to to get the email address there's all there's different ways of this um that are gdpr compliant right the cool thing about some shows like nev or web summit uh, which takes usually place in, in portugal those shows have an app and the app gives you access to all of the attendees. You have to search by them, by target account, for example, but you get access to them and it's super helpful. Why I don't understand, most um, sellers usually don't use them because it's sometimes manual work. So you have to go into those tools sometimes and search, for example, you wanna meet someone from Disney and you have to search Disney, who is attending from Disney and then you have to go manually through that. That's why we recommend build a process around this together with marketing, for example, that marketing helps you automate some stuff of this. Getting So when I search, for example, by target accounts, then um, I take some of the data and, and um, then afterwards I try with the email address to make, a, like Gerald said, a personalized outreach via Lemlist or so. Because the, the, the apps can be tricky. The apps can be very clunky sometimes. But with the rest, yeah, we, um, if anyone else is interested in those things, let us know and we'll follow up with you um, on the nitty gritty details of the processes here. Perfect, yes. And this brings us then also to one important topic, which is obviously the ROI. And we are going to share here also an ROI example of Web Summit, for example, that you see what, what we, showed you today yeah, is really this process, how we do it as well, and how we think it makes sense to stay organized on these important topics of the trade show. And I'm jumping now directly and give me just again one second here and switching actually back towards our platform. And what, what I will show you then is really what we have been discussing now on a practical example and looking into this example that you really see how does this look like when you when you go in there and one thing let me start here once more when you go in there and look this is now the platform how we did it for example for web summit and when you look at this this is really the playbooks we have been loading in like how you organize the event and you see Marcus was here mainly responsible for that and you have here all the things in even sometimes with a video where you can open up the video and having here a description where you see what needs to be done on this particular step. From an organizational point of view, we want to make sure we have everything covered. 
everything is in there and everything is in the right place. Same as you mentioned, and there was one question also from the audience, was more or less how to get the meetings. And there is one part which is called prospecting. And there is then here, how can you get the email addresses? And here actually we give guidance, and this is a really short guidance. There are also videos in there where you can see how you can get the email addresses that you exactly see how can you do that. And you can also share that with your other team members because the bigger your organization will be, probably other people will organize the trade shows and so on. So this is really the whole part of the playbooks here. And as mentioned, this is the ROI part. After half a year, after a year, after a month, you can go in and can look what's really the pipeline we have generated. This is synced, for example, with Salesforce as well, that you have consistent data. And in more details, you can look in and can see what are the meetings which are happened here and obviously can go in and say, what have I done to prepare the meeting? What was here the meeting notes in there have written everything down? And what was also the next steps here, what I have gathered? And this is how we see trade shows in this process, seeing everything in one place and really executing on this process. And next year, or actually this year, it's already 2022, when we go again to Web Summit, which we will, we go in there and we had 106 meetings and we will for sure contact the ones where we had a good conversation, but potentially it was not moving forward. We couldn't reach them anymore or whatever, because it was just not the right time, but we want to meet them again and take it on again. Marcus, anything to add from your side as well here? No, not really. I, I think it's just as important as this repetition, building a process around everything when it comes to, because you can apply the same principles that we have here to every trade show. And important is that to figure that out eventually, if you do, for example, I don't know, five or 10 or even 50 or more trade shows per year, you want to know which ones are working out and which ones are not and why. And the more you do that, the, the better it is um, tracked. And make sure to track everything in one place. If you don't do it like we did in Sheets, then if three years passed or two years and you still want to know what have we done at this particular time back in the years, um, you won't know it. You won't find it, especially if people leave. And yeah, um, store your, your data wisely here and, and build the processes and you will see um, the events will go um, going to be successful for you. Yes, totally, totally. I think this is so, so important to actually actually make make that work. Yeah, I cannot cannot agree more to make that make that um, happen. So what's our conclusion here out of that? Yeah. And the conclusion is, and first of all, thanks a lot for some questions. I see there are still some more questions which we are going to answer at the end of this webinar. But the conclusion is really trade shows are super important in B2B sales. And that's nothing new what I mentioned to you here. But what probably is new to someone here is make really sure that you prepare as best as possible for trade shows on the marketing side as well as on the sales side. Align these two teams because this would bring you a lot more of return on investments. And for sure, after two years of being locked in our homes, yeah, trade shows are definitely coming back. And people are keen to, I don't know how it is for you, but I see on LinkedIn, it feels like every day I see someone else being at the trade show and posting a photo of a trade show. And we see that trade shows are coming back. And what the statistics and the trend show is, trade shows will come back. And it will even be more because people will meet at these trade shows, will gather together and probably they will stay longer there and not travel for one meeting to another city, but rather gather information at the trade show and also meet in person. And yeah, make sure your processes are in place. I think, Marcus, and you can also talk a little bit more about that as your conclusion. But what I have seen is processes, they need to be in place. And not one day before the show that you brief that they have to be stellar in place. Every salesperson, every marketer has to be trained on them and they know exactly what to do so that you as a team really outperform the other teams on the show floor and that's what the aim of all of this is. 
Exactly. Yeah. One one last word maybe from my side here. The, because I also here's an, uh, another question that I wanted to, um, to act on. Um, which indicators we should include when we value the ROI of one trade show? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There are different methods how people measure it. I say um, keep it simple. Usually, the bigger companies, the more in detail they want to have it. But I say keep it simple. It's just the, the costs that you have, right? If you're a small company and you say, yeah, you have you pay the, the, the tickets, the flight tickets for the people, you everything, the hotels that the people are doing. So that's all people related. Um, then you have the, the booth, the marketing part of it, if you want. So if you build the booth or the tickets of the show, if you don't have a booth and, and you just walk around there, but also the, the marketing, if you put some money behind it, let's say you want to get access to an, to an app or, or so where you see the, the attendees, right? Usually cost also, I would put this into it, for example. Um, yeah, um, what else do we have? Um, then the booth is usually the biggest, the biggest part, but collecting just all of these costs and then it's an easy calculation to say, okay, how many opportunities did I get out of this? And the opportunities at the end, they count. What even counts more is then closed opportunities. And you will only know if something closes. If, if you have a company where the deal cycle is long, like six months or even longer, then you will have to look into this event. That's why it's so important to track it after six months again. So what did happen with this event? What did happen with the people that we've met there? And um, all of those things go into it. Um, if you are uh, interested in more in detail how we are doing it and what methods we use, then I can also follow up with this on this. Happy to do so afterwards. We'll anyway share the recording then and some other. Exactly. Places. One comment to this question is I think this is a lot of people asking about the ROI and as Marcus mentioned, costs and then on the other side you have your amount of meetings, then you can even structure the meetings if you would like. We use colors like green, yellow and red where we say green meetings for us, there was an opportunity generated, yellow meetings is more like hey perfect fit, yeah, but not the right time, not the decision maker, whatever, but still a good meeting. And red is like, hey, this was rather not our target group or whatever. Especially if you are trying out new trade shows or visiting trade shows the first time, this will really help you determine where should you go. Should you visit this trade show again or not? Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, I'm looking once more here on the questions and see there are still some in which we are more than happy to answer here. And obviously, we will follow up with all of you on um, particular questions. Feel free to ping us. We are more than happy to help you guys on particularly NAB and see to get the most out for you, for your trade show. There is still a couple of weeks to go, yeah, but now the hot phase starts to get really meetings pre-scheduled and get everything out there to make sure NAB 2022 and in addition, further trade shows are really a success and it was a pleasure for us hosting this today and thanks again for registering greetings around the globe we see registrations from all over the place this is super super nice i want to say a nice evening nice good morning to the ones who just started and hopefully to see you at nab marcus and myself will be definitely there and super super happy to meet you guys as well to see how we can further help and make your following trade shows a success. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. See you at NAB for a drink or two. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.